Okay, so let's go over how to properly don and doff personal protective equipment, PPE. In particular, this is gonna be PPE for airborne, droplet, and contact precautions. We'll start off with the donning or putting on procedure and we'll wrap up with the doffing or removal procedure. But before we get into those procedures, let's talk the basics. What's the equipment that you're gonna to need to do this to protect yourself properly? The first thing is going to be a gown. You will also need an N95 face mask. This is going to be for the airborne precautions. If you don't have one, you can use a surgical mask, but just realize this is not going to be for airborne. This will just be for droplet and contact precautions. You'll need a face shield. Alternatively, you can use goggles if that's all you have. And you'll need a pair of gloves. You'll also need an appropriate hand hygiene station with an alcohol-based antibacterial antiviral solution, a trash bin, and an area where you can put this on and take it off safely. So usually when you have a donning area, it's gonna be outside the patient's room or the outside the isolation room where you have all your equipment, you have your hand hygiene station, you can put things on safely and take things off safely. Before you start, you also want to think about, well, what do you have on your person? If you have jewelry, such as watches, rings, earrings, necklaces, you might want to consider taking those off as they can be nicest for infection. If you have long hair, you're going to want to put that hair up. Alternatively, in addition to that, you can wear a hair bonnet. And if you have a beard or facial hair, you're going to need to shave that off so that you can appropriately have a good seal with your N95 mask. So let's move on into the donning procedure. The first thing you need to do, and this is a cornerstone for PPE, is good hand hygiene. And the way I think of hand hygiene is I usually do two, three pumps, and it should take about 20 seconds. I start off by rubbing the front of my hand and the back and get really good contact between the two palms. And then I move to the back and I go in between my digits with the opposite hand down to the web spaces. And I'll repeat that for the other side. Same thing, really getting in between those fingers. Remember your thumbs now, they stick out, so you wanna do those individually by rotating them in the opposite palm for both of them. And then don't forget the tips of your fingers. In order to get the tips of the fingers, I will rub them in a circular fashion in the opposite palm and do the same for the other side. And then I'll finish up by rubbing the rest of that alcohol sanitizer till it's completely dry. And now you have the proper hand hygiene to move forward and start putting on your gear. The first piece of gear we're gonna start up is gonna be the gown, so gowning up. What I like to do is I like to open it up and I check it for defects, right? Holes, tears, tabs that may be missing that won't allow me to put it on properly. Once I am ensured that it's good, I'll start by putting my sleeves in. This one goes over your head, and you'll notice you have these two thumb holes. Those are gonna be for right before you put your gloves on. You don't need to do that right at the beginning, but realize that you will need that to get a good seal between the glove and the sleeve. Tie it up in the back. If you have a necktie, you'll do the necktie. This one doesn't have one, it just goes over your head. And then now you're gowned up. The next step is going to be your face mask, so the N95. And when I'm doing the N95, I like to cup it in my hands so that I have my two straps here. And what I'll do is I'll put it onto my face and pull that first strap over my head to the crown of my head, right at the top. And the second, the lower strap, I'll pull over. And you want to bring that all the way down to the nape of your neck where you don't have any hair. Make sure that the straps are nice and flush. And now you're ready to mold the mask to your face. This is really important because you need a good seal to protect you from any of those airborne precautions, the viruses that might be aerosolized. The molding process starts at the nose. I push and mold it along my nose. And then what I'll do is I'll move around my face to make sure I have a good solid seal. And this is why you can't have a beard, you'll break that seal. The last part really is checking for any air leaks. And to do that, you'll exhale. And 
feel for air leaks around. If you have any of those, you need to readjust the mask so that you don't have that air leak coming in and out. And so now you're masked up, you're molded, it's sealed. The next step is going to be the face shield or the goggles. If you're wearing goggles, it's pretty much put them on, put the strap back. These need to go over glasses if you wear eyewear. Typically though, we have face shields. Same thing with this, it has a padding that will go on the forehead. You want to take that strap, put it to the back. You can tighten to make that nice and snug. And the really important part is to make sure that the space shield comes all the way down below that mask, protect you from anything that may be coming in terms of uh, the contact of the aerosolized or the sputum that may be coming from your patient. And finally, it's going to be the gloves. So when I do the gloves, I'll put my thumbs into the sleeve holes. And you just basically put your glove on as you would any old glove. And the key here is to make sure that you pull that glove above the cuff of your sleeve so that there's no skin showing between the glove and your gown. And that's why you have those little rings. It really ensures that you have that length to cover it up. A quick note in terms of the gloves, sometimes people will double glove. That way if they're in with a patient and they have a contaminated pair, either from sputum or bodily fluids, they can quickly remove those and have a clean version. That is not essential. You can by all means do that. But if you do have contamination, realize you can always repeat the hand hygiene with the gloves on. So if these become contaminated, I'll just go back to my hand hygiene so that you've decontaminated these gloves. And now you're basically ready to enter the patient isolation room and do your patient care with proper PPE. Okay, let's go over how to remove or doff your PPE. Before I go through those steps, I do want to talk you through what happens if you're in the patient's room and you get grossly contaminated. First off, say your hands, right? You're gonna be using your hands. Let's say you have bodily fluids that have gotten onto your gloves and you need to continue taking care of the patient. By all means, take the time to decontaminate. So what you do would be take a wipe for the gross contamination and remove it off and repeat your hand hygiene. If you hit double glove, this is the chance to remove that outer layer and again, do hand hygiene. And now you're ready to continue taking care of the patient. You don't have to stop what you're doing. If for some reason the contamination is on your face shield or your mask, don't touch those. Leave those on until you're completely ready to remove all of your PPE and doff it. You shouldn't be readjusting your mask or your face shield uh, while you're in that patient room. That's a high risk kind of setting where you don't want to contaminate anything. They really should stay in place once they're on. But now let's say you are done being in that patient's room or in that isolation room and you're ready to remove the PPE. Most of the removal of everything except your mask is going to happen inside that room, usually at the door where you can throw it away. You may have a decontamination site right outside of that room. That's fine, but just realize you want to keep that mask on until you're outside of the isolation room because the airborne precautions are what this is going to be protecting you from. So you're inside the, uh, the room and you're ready to doff your equipment by the trash can or you're in that protect area, you're ready to doff it. The first thing, and this is going to repeat over and over again, is hand hygiene. So I'm gloved. I'm going to do my 20 seconds of hand hygiene. Once that's completed, the first piece of equipment you're going to move is your gown. And it's a disposable gown where you're going to be able to rip it off and pull it off of your body. If it's a cloth gown that goes into the laundry, you might have to do either the Velcro strap or do the untying. Just realize that if you are untying, you're gonna have to pull this downward to protect yourself and then untie the strap. You don't wanna be doing this back here where you contaminate your clothes or your hair, etc. Thankfully, with these disposable ones, they just rip off. So you wanna give yourself a hug and you pull up the shoulders and you're gonna be basically pulling off at the shoulders and waist, and you're keeping your hands in those sleeves, and you roll this gown off of your hands, down to the gloves, 
and remove the entire thing, including your gloves, with it as a whole entity. Ball it up and throw it in the trash. At this point, remember, we repeat hand hygiene. So, repeating the hand hygiene, 20 seconds, good cleaning. Once that's completed, the next step is removing the face shield. There's a couple ways of doing this. You can grab the front of the mask and pull off like this. You can grab from the sides and pull back. I kind of like doing the front aspect, or at least the side aspect. I don't want to be going back here. Again, I don't want to contaminate my hair. So when I remove this, I'll do the side of the front, pull it off away from me, and throw it into the trash. Now, at this point, again, what's the next step? Hand hygiene, right? You're repeating your hand hygiene between each step, because every time you remove something, they become at risk for contamination. Once I've completed my hand hygiene, I can now either leave that dirty space, either the room or the decontamination site, with my mask on, so then I can remove that in a safe area where there is no risk of aerosolized droplets that may be inhaled when I take this off. Okay, so once you've removed yourself from the isolation room or the patient's room where there's the risk of the aerosolized virus or infectious particles, you can now safely remove your N95 mask or your respirator. And so before you do this step, you're going to want to, again, repeat your hand hygiene, right? Making sure your hands are as clean and decontaminated as possible. This is a 20 second procedure. I'm not going to go through the whole thing again because it's just going to bore you guys to death. But once you have your hand hygiene, you're now ready to remove the mask. What I'll do for this is I'll bend slightly forward, put my head downward, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the lower strap first, pull it over my head, release that strap, and now I'll grab the upper straps here, pull that forward, and you'll have the mask hanging. And then you can just throw it right into the trash can. I'll take this opportunity to remove the hair bonnet, and then you're gonna wrap up the doffing procedure with good hand hygiene again, all right? So 20 seconds of really making sure you're cleaning your hands to decrease the spread of infection. If there's a sink with soap and water, I'll take this opportunity to use it and really wash myself up to the forearms, etc. And now I'm done. I've protected myself and I'm ready to move on to caring for the rest of the other patients.